Hi and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147. Happy 5th of June, everybody. Um, so it is section 8 that I'm doing today. So we do have some more colour on this one than we do on others. I know I've done the clear sheet for this June waffle this time but I must say I prefer cover sheets I can't help it I prefer cover paper I do prefer having it hidden but it is nice to try something a little bit different but I'm using a pen today this was a gorgeous gift to me from Elmeek um, it is a glass pen uh, so this one does actually have one of my everlasting tip pieces in it um, it does need the plastic end but the rest of it is um, an everlasting tip that you can get to just replace the brass tip part I've had it for quite a while um, it's actually one that I got well before sort of other metal tips ended up being about and it's worked perfect for this pen so let's fill up the white because we do still have plenty of white albeit not as much now this pen is a little bit more weighted um, due to it being glass just trying to work out that I'm actually pulling washi tape off there and not the clear undersheet. I just want to pull it back just a little bit while I get this first line done. See cover sheets do allow you to sort of mess about as well with your lines um, and you can sort of pull them up and let them overlap a little bit. Um, to give you a nice straight edge so I think that's another reason I prefer them I can manipulate them around a little bit better but we'll bear that in mind for future whip and waffles uh, but I'm going to stick with what I have for now let me just make sure that I'm getting straight across the line and just get my first part down and then I'll be able to stick this clear cover back down. Takes a little bit of getting used to this pen but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just it's just so pretty. All the pretty colours. Right there we go. I've got my first line of white down now. Hopefully that lifts it up enough to get the rest. But let's see how much we can zoom in today because I am finally on a higher section. Um, actually, a single digit section rather than it all being down in the 20s, which is what it's been so far. But that's what the decision wheel chose. And that's what we go with. That is the whole point of it being random, is it not? Hope everybody is having a fantastic Monday or as much of a fantastic Monday as you can. Not all Mondays are fabulous, um, but hopefully yours is going fairly well. Uh, comments, etc. I am up to sort of last Sunday's whip and waffle now so I should hopefully be getting on to the June waffle comments very very soon uh, which is going to be fun but what's not crazy world says hi they said they love the channel they've been diamond painting for a little over a year uh, and they're from Maryland in the US they have asked any tip for storing diamond paintings when done. 
Uh, I actually have about three different ways that I store diamond paintings when they're done. Uh, one is a display book of some sort. So those books that come with sort of clear plastic inserts. I use the small A5 version for my Paint Gem Mini sets. And then I use an A3 version for my 30 by 40 or smaller. So 30 by 40s, 30 by 30s. I think I might even have a few like 20 by 10s in there, though I tend to put them two to a page. So yeah, the display books is the way I love to store my smaller paintings. I do also have an art folder, which can be a great way for storing some flat. It, mine's actually under my couch, but you can potentially put them under a bed. You can get some, if you get a really good quality one, you can get some that can cope okay with being stored upright to tuck maybe behind a couch or something. Um, it really does depend on how stiff they are because diamond paintings are heavy with once they've got all the diamonds on them. So they can end up sort of crinkling up a little bit if you do try and stand them up and they've got room to move. Then you'll find that they will start to bend because they're able to and the weight makes them want to. Uh, so I have quite a few in there. I think that stores up to maybe 50 by 60s, maybe a little bit more. For others that are bigger than that, oh sorry, that art folder, I think I got an A2 art folder, though you can get them in the likes the size of an A1. You can get display books in that size as well, but I find a folder a lot easier to store and deal with than a display book that's that size. For any that are bigger and for quite a few of my bigger ones from high-end companies I tend to store them back in their box. If they're not getting hung or anything like that then they tend to just get rolled up and put back in their box. The box they came in can often be the best way. Uh, you can, of course, get round sort of postal tubes if you've not got a box for it and want it to have those stiff sides. Um, I do recommend if you can, if you're storing it rolled, to have a piece of like pipe insulation or a pool noodle, bit of pipe lagging sort of stuff just for the inside of the painting and again it's just to stop the weight of the diamonds over time actually sort of squashing your rolled up canvas. Um, it'll keep the canvas in the best condition that you can but a lot of the time for big ones that I have not framed or not yet framed they even ones that I'm working on when I have multiple. So at the moment I have a few different large paintings. Of course I have this painting as well. And I do put this one back in its box. Not every evening, but quite a few evenings. I do put this one back in its box because I pack orders here. I pack orders here. I might have other videos to do here. Um, if I have other videos that I need to film, unboxing videos or maybe videos ready for July, though I've not got that far yet, um, this painting gets rolled up and popped into the box. Sorry, I'm just trying to peel this top corner up and I'm just struggling getting hold of all the plastic because of course I don't want it to rip and get stuck on there for future sections but I do again it's because I'm cutting down the line 
I seem to have done better at the top than I've done anywhere else. Is that the line I want? No, it's the next one. So I just want to try and make sure that I've got my diamonds down this line. Uh, so yeah, I find the box is great then. Piece of foam. Some diamond paintings come with a piece of foam. So that works just as well. Uh, just to stop it squishing in on itself, roll it with the diamonds facing outwards. Um, helps to prevent any popping off. It doesn't mean you can't roll it the other way. Some people do and have had zero problems. Um, but I always roll it with the diamonds facing out. And I've had no problems whatsoever. It doesn't matter what manufacturer doing it that way. And yeah, so I have them stored a few different ways in a few different places. And then, of course, I have many that are framed or mounted on mount board and are up in different places in my home. It really does vary. But I enjoy the process more than anything else. And, of course, I've gifted some as well. Uh, Jen. The crazy cat lady, that's according to her, not me. Uh, she said she's going to do the June waffle. She says, but rather than sectioning it off, she's just going to do one release paper size section a day. She said, as the painting is 60 by 85. There are quite a few people that are doing that. And say the you make up the rules that work for you. Um, June waffle is primarily about taking a little bit of time for yourself each day to diamond paint. Somebody yesterday said they didn't have. I don't, I'm not sure if it was on yesterday's Facebook post or the day before's, uh, but it was on one of the the recent June waffle posts. She said she'd not had chance to do her section today. She was out with a friend, but she did some diamond painting shopping. Well, I said, that is her me time. The shopping is her me time. She was shopping for a hobby. She wasn't food shopping or any of that boring, mundane stuff that has to be done regardless. She was doing the exciting kind of sh of shopping. So... I class that as a little bit of me time. Uh, I'm sure the time with her friend was as well. But now she's got something lovely coming in the post to help her remember such a nice day. <laughs> <coughs> Elizabeth, she says, good afternoon, Rebecca. She said she loved the whip and chat. And again, this was last, last Sunday's whip and chat. Uh, she said tomorrow is Memorial Day, so Monday. She said also the unofficial start to the summer. She said her childhood memories of Memorial Day uh, were attending a very sombre service at St John's United Presbyterian Church and then visiting the graves of relatives. She said, uh, enjoy your whip and chat and have a great bank holiday. Thank you. Bank holiday was the start to our week away. So we did have a good one. We got quite a few bits done in the house before we went, but it was, it was nice to then draw a line under, under it all and go away for the week or... Well, it was five days, albeit late on a Monday and back earlier on a Friday, but it was good. Oh, look, I've got the colour, the only colour that I've not poured into a tray yet. Uh, Tiffany says she's also working on a Selena Finish Diamond Art Club mystery kit. She said, and holy moly, is it a struggle? Uh, struggle bus she said of a canvas 
was trying to work out how I'd read that wrong then. So yeah, it was a struggle bus of a canvas, she said, as the background of the whole thing is white. Yeah, I think that's why they've changed uh, and put some colour in the background. Um, I know somebody, I'm not sure, it may be a comment that's actually coming up. Somebody said that they've changed it for colours because some people were having a problem with the canvas all being black and white symbols and struggling to read it. Um, I have rolled my canvas up now because I do find that I keep potentially spotting bits of it as I'm walking into the room. I'm like, I need to move this canvas because I am so going to spoil it for myself at some point and I really don't want to. I want it all to be a surprise. Uh, but yeah, I do find this, doing a smaller section a lot better. Uh, maybe it is a good thing that I have a second painting kitted up while also doing the mystery painting and potentially we'll have a third one kitted up soon as well because it just helps with helps to relieve the sort of looking at just the black and white symbols which is fine when it's one on its own I've not found that I have a problem because of course these big sections are black and white it's when you have a lot of different symbols but they're all on black and white. Uh, Denise she says hi Rebecca she says she has started uh, her massive 180 by 140 centimeters it's a heaven and earth design uh, Amy Stewart's A Stitch in Time. Oh, that is a beautiful image. Um, I do really like uh, quite a few Amy Stewart images. They are really, really nice. Um, she says she's 21% completed so far. Go you. She said she thought she would get a bit fed up with the many, many colour changes she says but no she is absolutely loving it she said it's very colorful uh, and she thinks that that is what's helping spur her along uh, she said the housework gets put on the back burner a lot these days <laughs> sounds like a good excuse to me denise if you're after validation for putting the housework on hold i'll give it you um, she says she's also placed an order, uh, she placed an order for the April launch, uh, which I posted on the 27th of April. Uh, that must have been something a bit after the April launch. Uh, she said she had given up all hope of receiving it, uh, but it arrived exactly four weeks later. That is slow. The post seemed to have gotten better. Don't know what's made it slow again. Um, but she did get it on the 24th of May, she says. So for anybody who is in New Zealand, uh, that will give you an idea of how long post is taking at the moment. Yeah, I find it can be very intermittent sometimes. Um, we can have post arriving in New Zealand super quick or super slow. I don't know whether it can depend on the local sorting office or whether it depends on, you know, how many other people are posting things because, of course, if there's a lot of mail going out, is there, you know, a certain way they prioritise what gets put on the plane? Why is it just, you know one plane a day and when it's full it's tough you've got to wait I really don't know the logistics enough but it can be very intermittent uh, Liz she said thanks Rebecca she said she pulled out um, her Selena French Diamond Art Club mystery to work on while watching this she said she's making the most of the few days 
before June Waffle to work on it. She said the rest of the unworked canvas is now sat at the bottom of her easel so she can see what is left to do. She said the finished part is rolled up on pipe lagging hanging off the back of, the, of her easel. She said so it would be lovely to see what it looks like when it is all fully completed and unrolled. She said have a lovely week. Yeah, that's like another exciting time when it comes to a mystery. Because I do tend to have the uncompleted over the back of my easel, which is why I kept spotting it and I've put it back in its box. Um, and I have the completed part, I tend to roll that uh, at the easel part in front of me. It's just the way I tend to work. I always tend to start bottom left. Uh, sometimes it's actually top left because I turn the canvas round, but in general, the canvas is bottom left for me. Uh, but yeah, I roll mine up as well as I'm finishing it. So it will be really nice to, you know, not look back on that until the whole thing's completed and sort of have an extra little bit of excitement still to come by unrolling all of the mystery and seeing the whole picture all in one when it's done. Uh, Michelle said she is sat working on a painting while watching this. Uh, she said she came across an issue and she's hoping I can help out with it. Hopefully I can, if not I'm sure there will be others that will be able to help. She says on the 310 she says she can tell that there is some sort of powder on all of them. She said how could she go about possibly cleaning this off the diamonds uh, because it's messing up the glue dot in her pen because yeah all that little fine particles will end up sticking to your glue dots and coming off the diamond. I actually had some 3371 that behaved in the same way. It had a coating over it. I'm not sure if it's a coating that gets put on from production or whether it's just picked it up somewhere along the way. Uh, but you can wash diamonds. And that's what I did with mine. So if you get a sieve, so the one with the, not with the holes like a colander, um, the one that's like a, a mesh net on a hoop <laughs> or a fishing net or something, something like that. Uh, I used a sieve uh, for sieving my flour. Uh, I pop my diamonds in there and rinse them, wash them under the tap, under the flowing water. Then I, um, of course, got as much water off as I could, shake a dake dake, and then tip them onto a piece of kitchen roll or paper towel, depending on which country you're in, what, whether you understand kitchen roll or whether paper towel makes more sense. Uh, popped them on some paper towel, spread them out as much as I could, and they dried really quick. Um, and then I just tipped them back into my pot and carried it on from there. If you can spread them out over the kitchen towel, it just stops them clumping together a little bit. It's also what makes me wonder if it's part of the process um, and whether the reason some diamonds might be clumped together a little bit is because they've not dried properly before they've been put back together. Maybe. I could just be guessing because I really don't know. But I do know that washing it, washing them is perfectly fine. So yeah, you're going to have to wash your diamonds. I know it's a chore, it's a job, but at least it's a little bit different to the normal washing up. Uh, you probably can put some washing up liquid of some sort in it if you want as well. Uh, though I think you know, running water will probably be enough to get rid of it. Uh, Lady Dax 
she said hi Rebecca she said she finally got to watch the video uh, my Sunday whip and waffle on the Monday she said P Jelly and I are a bit worn out having the boys I can imagine you forget how tiring young children are until you spend a day with them uh, and you quite forget how much energy they have and, and not in turn how much energy they have but how much energy they can drain out of you <laughs> even if you're having a more relaxing day uh, she said she may her start to the June waffle may be a little bit sporadic as she will have to work around outings etc uh, but hopefully she says she'll be able to catch up when they go home when they go back and you once you've recovered as well afterwards uh, and you've managed to rest up hopefully you'll get a few a few little sneaky peaky diamond painting sessions sneaked in while the boys are out with pea jelly uh, crystal she said hello rebecca she said she's curious if people from other countries outside of the us do dna tests for ancestry she says most of us in the US are Heinz 57. She said some of us want to know where uh, they are originally from. She says for, no for those that don't know, Heinz 57 is a source. Uh, it's advertised as 57 herbs and spices that make up the source. Um, she says, in other words, she says we are a big mix of nationalities. Uh, we do have ancestry sites. Um, we do have DNA tests available. Whether it's widely done as much, maybe not. Uh, I know there are some people that do it. I don't know if it's something that's necessarily as big um, a thing to do as America uh, only because you'll find a lot of us are just we're European um, of, of varying degrees and yeah it's it is what it is but no I've not personally done it I think my husband has done one um, but yeah he's he's basically European um she says hers is 52% England, 20% Scotland, uh, and the rest is Sweden and Denmark, Germany, Norway, Ireland and Wales. She said, see, Heinz 57. Yeah, you're just European. Group it all together, European. Um, she said she thought she would ask, she says, just as a conversation starter. She said it's not to offend anyone in any way. She said she didn't find this out until a few years ago. She says, but her whole life, she's always gravitated towards things English and Scottish. She said it's part of her makeup. She gets it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 I say, we do have them. Uh, there are, there's Ancestry.com, I think, does one. There might be a couple of others. Uh, but I think, I think a lot, a lot are just, you know, probably the same sort of mix um, of English, Scottish, Welsh, but then some Norway and Denmark and, things like that in there as well <clears throat> but yeah it's not as big a thing but I guess it's interesting so um, maybe one day I'll get curious enough to do it I know my grandfather I think it was was part Scottish and part Welsh so I've definitely got some of that in me um, where else? Not as sure. 
um, Brenda, she says, is there any place in Canada to buy drills for a heaven and earth design? Can anybody answer that for Brenda for me, please? Um, I'll either read it out on the June Waffle or if you want to reply to her directly. Um, it is appreciated. Her comment is on my um, Whip and Waffle doing my Diamond Art Club Mystery Ocean. So if you search Abstract Ocean and it will pop up. And that's the video she's asked on. If anybody could let her know, or as I say, comment on this video and I'll get to it in a few days and let her know. <coughs> Cat Lady says, oh, an extra. She says, by the way, uh, she is now 50.48% through her Heaven and Earth Design projects. Well done. It's a good marker to make the over 50%. You're on the, on the downhill part now rather than the struggling uphill part. It's a good place to be. Uh, as long as you're still enjoying it, of course. Otherwise, it might be something to bring out when you feel like you need to challenge yourself. Uh, Sparkle It Up says that she loves watching the progress on my heaven and earth design. Uh, she says she wouldn't have the courage to do something so big. I reckon you could do it. It's just lots of small sections, just the same as I do on a painting. Just takes longer. It just takes longer to complete, like three years or so. Uh, Nikki Dart, she says, what is an AB pen? Um, so we have a couple of pens that are used for AB diamonds. A couple that we sell in our shop. One is currently on clearance and one is a stock item. But basically they have uh, an end. Oh. I forgot I was zoomed in, uh, have an end that is made up of wax. Uh, so they're called pickup pens. So we have two different types at the moment. Uh, this is one. And then the Diamond Art Club Mystery that you were watching, I used uh, one of our, what I think is a nicer pickup pen. I used the crystal version, which when you take the cap off, it has that on one end. And it has a tiny one on the other end, used more for pushing the diamonds where you want them to go. Uh, I did use that one when doing my mystery. Um, a couple of days ago when I was doing a section on my mystery painting. And I just took, because by the time I got to my ABs, I was sort of filling in the blanks when I was doing my ABs. So I actually took both ends off the pen so that I could nudge them in uh, and didn't use my wax tip to nudge them in because it's a lot more sensitive. But because AB diamonds have a coating on them to give them the iridescent look, sometimes, not always, but sometimes a glue dot in your pen or even sometimes wax in your pen can pick up some of the AB coating each and every time you place a diamond. And then when it comes to placing other diamonds, it can't pick them up because it's covered in a coating. So I like to use those pens for my AB diamonds each and every time and keep my glue dots in my pens Nice and fancy and working perfectly fine for all the other diamonds I need to put down. Uh, Helen, she says she thinks that multi-placing squares she finds are easier. She said the square drills line up beautifully on the tray she said so they go beautifully onto the painting in a nice straight line 
Let's see, all this multi-placing talk, you guys are trying to confirm that I do need to multi-place at some point on this painting, which really I do need to do. But I am going through gifted pens at the moment, so I don't have any multi-placers in them. We'll see how many pens, how many different pens I have to go through before I maybe get to one, get to all my gifted pens and can start putting different places in the end and actually give it a go. Oh, very long comment today uh, from Denise. So this is a long comment on, well, it's actually on um, the Diamond Art Club. Uh, but basically she says she thinks she is currently great at indulging. Uh, she said she bought her own 3D printer uh, and she now has more filament than she can reasonably store. It's a dangerous little world. It really is. Uh, she said it's probably been less than six months and she said she could probably run her loan machine 24-7 uh, for a year and still have filament left. Uh, still have half left. She said she has designed herself her own tray. Uh, so now she is swimming in trays and filament. <laughs> Quite a collection. She says she does print a variety of other things to help use the filament up. Uh, she says, but man, she says filament is an addiction on its own. Uh, she said sometimes it's nice to be able to buy rolls that are a quarter of a kilogram. So she can get more variety out of one purchase. Uh, she says, but she still hasn't used a full one of them up yet. Uh, she says, and of course, there are so many colourways that there is always something new that she hasn't printed with yet. Uh, she says she does bargain hunt, but even at hunting for a bargain, she says dozens of rolls do add up. Oh yes, dozens of rolls definitely do add up and I mainly know that because I know how much we end up spending on filament on a regular basis. Often when we, we have a, a couple of main suppliers for filament, um, though we do, you know, venture to trying other ones, especially for the likes of limited editions to get those different colours and yeah boy some of the orders that we place for rolls of filament uh, are pretty high um, and yeah but we do get through it all we do get through all the filament some of our printers take about two weeks to get through a roll of filament uh, and then we have one that takes about a week to get through a roll of filament so it's busy bees. Uh, she said a few weeks back she also got uh, a notification from Amazon that a lathe, uh, which you can use for turning diamond painting pens, um, was on a deal. She said she has been wanting to turn her own pens um, for as long as she's wanted to get into 3D printing. Uh, because um, she opted to go with 3D printing because it was more of a practical hobby uh, that could be applied to more than just trays. Um, and she could, put, of course, print other things. Uh, she said it isn't as messy and it doesn't require as much space um, for a 3D printer as it does for a lathe. Um, she said it also felt less expensive, but the joke is on her and the amount she's spent on filament is my guess. Um, she says, anyway, the, the deal notification got her all ramped up 
about wanting a lathe. Um, she's only ever used a lathe once and she doesn't have a workshop, but it's still got her ramped up. I can feel you with that one, Denise. Once, once I get an idea in my head, I am itching to try something. I would love to be able to have a workshop and stuff for all sorts of different things that I keep thinking that we could create. Um, we just don't have... Well, we do have the space in the garden if we were to get some form of workshop. At the moment, it's time. It's time for everything that stops us. Um, so, yeah, she has taken a class, made a pen. She says, but the cost and the space has always made her wary. But she has, because she's enjoyed 3D printing so much, she says she has convinced herself uh, that she can make pens. Um, anyway, every time, before she could overcome, she said her feelings of guilt for buying a lathe. Um, she said the deal was gone by the time she went to the checkout screen. Uh, and then she kicked herself for not ordering it. She said to make herself feel better, she did think about plans for making the garage ready for a lathe in case the next time, so the next time that a deal popped up, she would be ready. Um, she said, telling herself that it was getting into summer, so she wouldn't want to be using a lathe in the summer. Um, but it didn't really deter her, she said. So she, every time she was doing school pickups, she would browse her phone for deals, uh, looking for machines locally. She said she didn't have much luck at first, but then, you can see where this is going, can't you? Uh, but then she managed to find a deal that she couldn't pass up on. Um Basically, somebody was selling a lathe that got damaged in shipment, she said, for 80% less than what it would have been retail. Um, she wasn't able to test it, but of course it was being sold as a damaged item. Um, they did figure... Yeah, they did figure that it was the power switch that was the broken part. Um, and he didn't notice before they plugged it in, but they did find a replacement switch on Amazon. Uh, and they were able to verify that it works after they bought it. Um, they do have some other parts that it needs on back order. Sorry, I'm nervous. But it cost her about half of the deal that she missed. So the deal on Amazon the one she managed to find on Facebook Marketplace cost her half of that. Um, and it's a slightly better machine. So it sounds like it was the right thing to happen. Uh, she'll be able to get everything she needs to start using it. She said, including some pen blanks. You've got an exciting future. Uh, she said, all for less than the original um, price that she was looking to pay. Um, she says it's not at all an affordable venture, uh, particularly for something that she is aiming to do as just a hobby. She says, but neither was 3D printing. Uh, she said, but she's enjoyed that enough to feel confident that she can learn how to be successful with a lathe too. She says she does struggle with her mental health. Um, she has been a stay-at-home mum for 13 years and feels like she's lost a little bit of her identity um, and sense of purpose. She says she has always had her ups and downs, um, but for the, she says these last six months or so have resulted um, in her actually feeling the most like her old self. Um, 
than she can remember feeling in years. It's because you've got your own little passion. Uh, she said she didn't realise how much making new things, she said, gave her life. Uh, she said she was always that child with a million questions uh, about all of the exceptions to things that they were learning uh, because she wanted to know all of the things, she said, so it just makes sense. She says she just needs to make sure that some of the new things that she wants to learn aren't quite as expensive. Yeah, it's how long you can keep the expensive learning hobbies up uh, but I'm excited you've managed to find a deal it definitely makes it you know a lot more manageable that you find you know that you find a deal that makes the price a lot more reasonable plus a bargain's always good and I'm sure you will have an amazing time making yourself diamond painting pens of some sorts. Uh, it's quite a process from what I've seen um, of, of people that do hand make the diamond painting pens. Um, there is quite a process behind it but it is something that you can get lots and lots of variety from. I've just nearly tipped those white ones out. Did you spot it? How many times do I do that? Right, I want the letter L. I'm going across the bottom here, trying to get all my bottom bits filled in. But yeah, it sounds like you are going to have uh, an amazing pen collection by the time you are done, Denise. Um, it's going to be great fun. Think of all the colours. You can match it to all your filament colours and have pens to match your trays. And then maybe you need to design yourself a holder that you can print with some of your filament that is piling up. Um, create yourself some sort of pen and tray holder so you can keep them both together while you're diamond painting. And then you can use your filament up making that as well because they can take quite a while to do. Uh, Tiffany, she says, where did you get your heaven and earth design from? Uh, so the actual chart itself is from heavenandearthdesign.com. Uh, it is a PDF chart. I bought the blank canvas from AliExpress three years ago. And the diamonds are primarily mine and my wonderful subscribers spare ones. A lot of people were extremely kind and sent me spare diamonds to go along with my own so that I could collect all the diamonds I needed to be able to finish the, finish it. Uh, Sarah B, she says, hi, Rebecca. She says she's so excited for June Waffle. She said she really enjoyed watching me work on my new mystery kit. She said she's never done one, so it is great to see what they are like. She said she definitely wasn't expecting that pop of pink. I wasn't either. It made me second guess it. It definitely made me second guess the colour. Uh, the fact that it's abstract as well means that even when I'm doing it now, and things pop up and I think, oh, that was a bit of a change of colour. Uh, I actually had it in a section last night. The colour really changed. And I was like, oh, and I was like, no, finish. Finish like that bit and the next bit. And it became apparent when I actually did the section following it. It was like, oh, that's what it is. But because it's abstract, it has a different look anyway. So only seeing half of it really doesn't help when it's abstract. So what? Um, once I'd done the second section and was, or the section next to it and was actually able to see what it was, it made a lot more sense. But yeah, it's fun. It's different. I like different. 
Uh, Hannah says, please do another whip and chat. She said she enjoyed it. Well, June is your whip and chat month. I have one a day. Um, I don't, I won't be doing another whip and chat on the mystery painting. Um, only because I don't want to spoil it for anybody that has the painting themselves. There are a lot of people that just pop on my whip and chat videos and yeah, I don't want to, to spoil it for anybody new um, that may have it in their stash and has not yet done it because it just, it takes quite a bit of the excitement out of it. But I'm definitely doing many more whip and chats on many other paintings. Uh, this one, you will be able to see the whole painting completed from start to finish in my June waffles. So stay tuned each day and by the end of June, this painting should be done. Uh, Alice, she said, after you read my comment, she said she thinks that I could pass as being an Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've been to Australia enough times now that I can understand enough, even if it's spoken in slang, uh, to get by. Uh, I also have, of course, my dad's very, my dad is very good at telling me, you know, what things are different and and what things mean and and some some things not to say uh, because they are completely different in Australia and they don't mean they mean something a lot worse than they do in the UK uh, there's a there's a couple of brands I think in the UK that are brands for very different items in Australia uh, she says, job well done, and you gave me a good giggle. Well, that's good. At least at least I know I can keep going to Australia and I'll be safe uh, when I go to visit family. She said, what you called Woolworth, she says, could be the likes of Kmart, Target and Big W. Yeah, I think our Woolworths is probably similar or what our Woolworths used to be. It was a lot smaller, but of course, uh, the world seems to have gone bigger on ranges that it covers since. But yeah, I would say it, it's very much like Kmart, probably. But then again, Kmart, Target and Big W are all very similar in themselves anyway. Um, or at least I find that they're very similar. They do stock different things, but I find that, you know, generally very similar. I wouldn't know what to describe the main differences between the two of them anyway. Right, L is done, or at least I think it is. If not, I will have to get the tray out. Uh, she says, Alice says she's here working on mystery kit number nine. Uh, by Selena Finish, she said, so she won't be able to post the progress on the June Whip and Waffle status, she says, but she will be having a squidge at what everybody else is doing. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for respecting that other people may not have done it um, and not necessarily and not posting sort of a mystery progress. Um, <clears throat> I wish there was a way to sort of, you know, hide a picture unless somebody clicks on it and actually wants to see it. I have seen it. I'm not sure what platform it was on. I'm not sure if it was a Facebook or you had to, um, or whether it was a completely different platform. I think it may have been a different platform where you actually have to hop press your finger on the image to be able to see it. It would be kind of nice if we could sort of do that and give a little warning with it to say, by clicking on this image, you will be seeing a mystery painting. Be a nice way to be able to share. Uh, but there is a Diamond Art Club mystery group. 
where maybe you could pop up either when you're finished or every now and then throughout it what you've completed um, so that you do get to share because it's something that I know quite a few of us would love to see but we also wouldn't want to disappoint somebody else who has it in their stash um, just because we want to see it. Uh, please make sure though that you send me, Alice, please send me an email with the completed image when you're done because I don't have that one and I really would like to see what it's like finished. <laughs> right, we are on to June Waffle responses. So there'll be lots of different days. There might be some topics that we end up going back to and sort of covering again, which often happens across the whip and waffles when new topics come in. But it's just like chatting with your friends. Things go off topic, things come back on to a different topic. Sometimes do a little loop-de-loop before you get back back round to maybe a topic you were discussing an hour ago. Um, but the cat lady, she says she is working on her heaven and earth design for the June waffle. She said she needs to get it off her desk. I know that feeling. Uh, she says the early morning sun is not helping the double-sided tape. She said today her wax pen played up, so she's using the glue dot um, pen, she says, but there isn't much glue left. So she does want to sort out um, a pen for tomorrow so that she's ready. I am still on the letter D. Just spotted one up in this little top corner. I think I've got them all. If I've not... I can grab my tray and go back to it. Uh, she says she's out tomorrow and she's off to see a concert. Ooh, very nice. She says, but she will be back on Saturday. Well, we've now passed Saturday, so I hope you had an amazing time at your concert. And yeah, had fun while you were out. Maybe you'll have to cover up your painting with the morning sun shining. I have noticed quite a few times, especially in our conservatory at the moment, sometimes you walk in and it's like, Ooh, it's warm. Uh, Army Moa, she says she has tried multi-placing many times. She says she has never liked it. Uh, but she did order some curved multi-placers from Etsy and now she says she can actually multi-place and she can't tell which sections were multi-placed and which sections weren't. Um, she does always start with the single placer when doing a border so a bit like when you start a section or the edge of a painting. Um, and she does single place the confetti so that it always stays straight. She said she does only use it for large blocks of colour. She says, but the curved multi-placer for her was a game changer. Good to know. I have to see whether our supplier does any of those and maybe give some of them a go. I will try and remember <coughs> to look that up and see if that's something that they can offer. Uh, Danielle says hi, she says it's her first waffle and she says she really enjoyed the content. Oh thank you Danielle, I hope you manage to find a little bit of time each day if you can to come back and join us in our June Chitter Chatter while diamond painting. There are quite a few people doing, of course, lots of different crafts as well as lots of different diamond paintings. 
um, and quite a few people you know are just diamond painting for the length of the waffle and some are doing a certain section and often finishing because before me because these are longer waffles this time while I do have my tray storage um, which is available in the shop from Friday uh, while I am using my tray storage, everything's kit up already in their trays and it makes it quicker, so much quicker when it comes to bits like this. It is a larger painting than I normally do. So therefore, I am actually taking longer on this waffle than I would do when doing a 30 by 40. Um, because this is a bigger painting. What size was it again? 40 by 60, this one. So in effect, I have doubled the size of the painting I normally do. I don't quite think I did that math in my head. <laughs> when I decided to do this one, I did think to myself, oh, it's bigger. And I thought if I use the tray storage to kit up the painting, I might get away with a 40 by 50. Yeah. Fell in love with this one, especially because it's a charity one. I decided this one would be ideal and I thought I'm only pushing it a little bit more with it being a 40 by 60. No, it is twice the size of the normal painting that I do for a June waffle. So I'm definitely saving time using the trays and having the trays all ready with diamonds in it. I think I'm also saving time by the fact that there is a lot of white uh, because I am able to just dot, 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 dot my diamonds and not have to think about even changing trays for a lot of it. But normally a June waffle took me about 45 minutes. These ones, uh, so far, everyone has hit over an hour. So I am doing, in effect, the size of section quite quick, but I am doing it, I am taking longer than a normal waffle because of the size of my sections, because they're ginormous. Oh, I also have a giveaway for today. I have got it to the side of me, reminding me not to forget. And of course, I very nearly have gotten to the end of this and very nearly forgot. But we do have a giveaway for today's waffle. I am inserting quite a few giveaways throughout the June waffle at random times. Uh, they're not all at the beginning of the video, they're not all at the end. They will they will be at lots of different times, they're not every day. Um, but you can win for today's, uh, you can win this heart storage box. I will show it you more um, at the end of the video when I zoom back out. It is one that I unboxed um, from fan cells a couple of weeks ago. It's never been used. Uh, it is a heart shaped 60 bottle storage case. It is the deep bottles and that will be the first giveaway. So the giveaway is going to be open for 24 hours um, so if you see tomorrow's video up, then this giveaway has finished. It's the easiest way to describe it. Okay, I changed my battery because my battery was flashing. So while I'm still zoomed out, I will show you this and then I can chat about it while I finish up this section. Because this is a longer ripping chat today for some reason. Taking my sweet time filling in these gaps. Uh, but it is a heart shaped butterfly case. You do get a bag of different goodies. And these are all the deep pots. So they're the deep round pots. 
and that is going to be today's giveaway is a nice storage container we all like storage containers i just have so many um, that i figured this is a good one to give away because it is brand new which is always nice um i will be giving away some diamond paintings and things as well uh, which of course will not be half done they will also be brand new um, but we're starting off with the storage container so to enter it is free to enter it is available to everyone um, and what you need to do is you need to head over to admorezest.com which is my website it's, it's it's written in the little bottom corner of the screen here it's also in the description box uh, when you go to the website, there is a tab called Giveaway. If you're on a mobile, you need to click on the little three little lines at the top of your screen and go to the Giveaway section and it will ask you for a password. So the password for today's giveaway is June. It's lowercase, J-U-N-E, just the month, June pop in that and it will give you details but basically you just fill in a little form a name and email address I think is all we ask for um, we don't use the information for anything else there's no marketing no mailing list it's not linked to any of that what we will do in 24 hours so by the time tomorrow's video is up we will do a random number generator and pick that number on the spreadsheet. Contact the person via the email address, hence that's why we need it, to say congratulations, you've won, what's your address for us to post it to? And then all other information, as soon as somebody's got back to us, all information is deleted. The only reason we keep hold of the spreadsheet information um, until the person's got back to us is in case they don't. And therefore, if they don't get back to us after a set amount of time, then we will contact the next person. We'll do another random number generator and pick another person to win. Um, I will send it anywhere in the world. Just note if you are further afield, it might it won't go fast mail. It will go a little bit slower mail. So it may take a bit to get to you. But these giveaways do end up costing me quite a bit in postage. Um, so I do send it the, the, the slower way abroad. Um, but it will reach you eventually but yeah that's the only way I can keep it open to the world and I don't think it's fair personally I don't think it's fair to limit giveaways there are actually a few youtubers that I watch not diamond painting community uh, other other youtubers that I watch and the amount of times that they do giveaways for gift cards which of course are no use to me uh, to have a gift card for an American store uh, or just open it up to the US and I don't want any of you guys to have that level of disappointment so it's open to everybody it's open for 24 hours um, it does state only enter once um, otherwise we will just remove all entries um, because we have had people in the past enter in multiple times over the course of the 24 hours. And it's not fair to everybody else. So one entry per person. And we will contact the winner via email. And I will let you know in a couple of days who the winner of that giveaway was. Just a first name uh, and maybe country. 
because of course I don't want to give out their I don't want them to be identifiable so I will do first name and country uh, to let you guys know who won the storage box but there are many more coming um, we have most of the rest of the giveaways will be diamond paintings of various different sorts and they will be random random times random days but I would just want to give a little bit back to you guys that support me by watching the channel and subscribing and all the rest of it oh we do ask for your YouTube name I think just to confirm that you are subscribed that might be the other thing that we ask for um, I do just ask that you hit the subscribe button but no money exchanges hands in any way okay I think I went for, I need to shorten that spiel about um, a giveaway but I am on the June waffle comments so June waffle chitter chatter from now on but number eight is done oh look at how that color pops though I mean as much as I do like it when these are covered completely in the likes of a piece of cover paper there is definitely a difference when those little bad boys pop um, so do please join me tomorrow and we will see what the next section will be I'm really enjoying working with my tray storage though so yeah thank you all so much for watching and I'll speak to you all tomorrow